Uh, my name is Tone Lanza, or Tony, and I joined the Lowe's and Fish community a little over a year ago, November of 2017, and been in mental health for about 28 years. I wanted to find a community and serve others, especially the homeless and those living with poverty. And I actually started visiting Catholic Work Communities uh, in August, September of 2017, and came to Duluth on November 7th, thinking I was only gonna spend about two weeks. I was not planning to stay here, but after about two weeks, I fell in love with Duluth, and this community decided to stay. The community is a Catholic work community that's been around for actually 30 years this year. The key tenants or principles of Lowe's and Fishes is, of course, houses of hospitality. We have two houses, one to serve men who are homeless, and one to serve single women and families who are homeless. And then we have a house that works with foster kids. Thinking about the environment, thinking about the changes in the climate, and how it's negatively gonna impact um, the disadvantaged third world countries, the poor. Um, uh, for example, uh, I was raised in Louisville, Kentucky, and in Louisville, the poor sections of Louisville were the western part of the city. So whenever companies had to do toxic waste dumps, it always went to the western part of the city, not the eastern part where the middle class and the upper middle class lived. Just keeping in mind how climate change and the change environment are going to significantly impact the poor, uh, the homeless, and disadvantaged, uh, not only in the United States, but around the world. And the fact that they don't have the resources uh, to address this, like those of us who are, say, white, middle class, or upper class uh, in this country, or in, say, Western Europe or Africa. In my work at Lowe's and Fishes, given that we primarily work with the homeless and the disadvantaged in Duluth, actually, besides helping them find housing, uh, finances, uh, to buy food, to pay rent. Um, we'll often talk about how the environmental changes and climate changes are affecting their life, um, whether it's um, carbon emissions, whether it's plastics, um, whether it's salt and Lake Superior. Um, many of the people I talk to, especially from West Duluth, do talk about how the companies in this city actually um, dump their waste in West Duluth. Um, when I moved to Duluth, I found myself, found myself writing essays about the environment. And after circulating some of them, uh, certain media outlets and organizations asked if they could use them. So one thing I've been doing is writing op-ed pieces for the Duluth News Tribune. And then we have a piece coming up that's going to be highlighting the uh, our Planet, Our Future Summit coming up. Besides that, uh, I've tried to find any opportunity to speak to environmental groups in town. I've spoken before, like the Clean Water Initiative groups uh, back at Duluth, and then um, had an opportunity to speak at UMD. And I mainly spoke about loaves and fishes, but as I ended my talk, kind of as an afterthought, I told the students that I felt Duluth needed an environmental summit, that we needed to come together and we also need to hear from the students of Duluth at the high school and college level. So before I could leave the room that night, Emperor organization told me they wanted to do this summit, uh, which is going to be coming up this spring. And the other thing I've decided to do is uh, a few days after the summit, I'm heading to the East Coast and I'm going to be walking from Philadelphia to Washington, D.C. Uh, between April 8th and April 15th and we'll be talking to reporters and environmental groups along the way about the personal changes I've made in my own life and just talking about future generations and especially those of us that are older, that are parents and grandparents, um, what we should be doing um, to protect the environment and to work on climate change initiatives. You know. <coughs> I think the first place any of us have to start is, is with personal responsibility. So I think we have to look at our own lives, um, how do we carry ourselves on a daily basis in regards to the environment and climate change when it comes to recycling, composting, community gardens. Um, is there any possible way that you or I could reduce our carbon imprint or footprint? Um, could I be walking more versus driving a car? 
could I be using public transportation versus driving? Um, and then everything from use of plastic bags at grocery stores. Um, so that's the first thing is what can I do personally? Second thing is can I find an environmental group or climate justice or uh, climate change organization that I could join and support? whether it's a financial contribution, maybe lobbying on their behalf at the state legislature or Congress. Um, so that would be a great thing. And um, I think the last thing maybe is, um, yeah, taking some initiatives with the private sector and corporations. I have two sons and I worry about the world they're gonna live in. I have two nephews I'm concerned about. I think about the children in this community and what kind of planet they're going to be living on in years to come. Um, so on a personal note, uh, besides my work here at the Dorothy Day House, I have promised myself that I will spend every waking hour writing about the environment, speaking about the environment, uh, or getting involved in any kind of initiatives at the local and national level that I can to raise people's awareness of what's going on. Um, this is not fake news. Not by a long shot. This is the real world, and we have to address it. Um, and I'm doing this to hopefully empower um, the youth of today because I can't even imagine uh, how long a lot of young people are feeling when they hear the news every day about the changes in the environment and climate change. Um, uh, when I was in high school, college, it was the Vietnam War and Civil Rights Movement. And I thought there couldn't be nothing bigger than that, that the youth would have to deal with. And this is bigger than those two put together. Right now we're in the Dorothy Day House, which is a house of hospitality for men. And uh, not only do we have nine guys who live on the second floor, but we're open from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday for visitors. Uh, so some of the noises you may have heard in the background are some of our visitors. And we also have a work crew working in the basement and our back stairs doing some remodeling.